On to this now, the South African Democratic Teachers Union in KwaZulu Natal has warned of disruptions at metric exam marking centers. Some teachers have apparently not received payments based on performance management evaluations. The department has given assurances that those payments will be made this month. Nobushe Matise is following that angle of the story for us and uh, she joins us now. Uh, Nobushe, it's quite concerning this because uh, the students are going to expect their results whether or not the department is fighting with uh, the people who are marking these papers that's none of their business how worried are the department officials about this situation Indeed, Goli, it will be a sad time for matriculants who will be awaiting uh, their results in the province of KwaZulu-Natal should uh, Satu then go ahead with those disruptions at marking centres. But what their issues are is that uh, the department has a policy framework regarding performance evaluations and they're supposed to pay a fee of about 1500 and that was supposed to be paid in October and seemingly that hasn't been paid and what Satu is saying is that they've received excuse after excuse excuse. And now the department is saying that uh, they have uh, gone to Treasury to ask that those payments be made at least before the end of December. Treasury had said they're inundated uh, and those payments can only be done in January. But the department has come back saying that they will be able to make those payments in uh, the, just before the end of December. But Satu, however, is saying that they don't trust that this might happen because these payments were meant to be done in October and therefore they're saying that they even doubt uh, that the department will be able to pay marks. I'm actually joined by the Provincial Secretary um, of Satu in the province, Umam Nomarashia Galuza, and I want to, her to take us through um, what their reasoning is behind those threats uh, to disrupt at marking centres. Thank you very much, uh, Magaluza. Just explain to us um, where this comes from and whether you will be uh, disrupting marking centres should the department uh, not hold their end of the bargain. Thank you. Um, you know, Every year, the department has to pay the pay progression, which is for the performance of educators. It's 1.5% of the, the gross salary that each educator receives. The department has, as you have said, failed to pay from October when the minister uh, made that determination around the, the salary adjustments. So now we've been asking the department, when are you paying? Because other provinces are at an advanced stage of making those payments payments others have even paid. So now we wanted not to disrupt uh, the marking, but our issue is that the markers, as they are teachers, they continue to ask us to say, when are we getting our pay progression? That's the question from all teachers throughout the province. And we wrote to the Director General and the HOD to say, we want to consult our members. Going to marking centers was for purposes of consulting with members and also giving them feedback. Remember, the department had uh, responded to say they don't have money, uh, they've, uh, they've overspent here and there, which is nothing that has to do with teachers. So yesterday we had those consultations and unfortunately you find that um, um, uh, we had difficulty in other areas to, to, to get that access. But other than that, we're able to consult with our members. And that gave uh, rise to uh, um, the, the circular, circular 53, that the department issued, promising that by the end of this year, they will be paying end of December. And we are saying the circular is, is vague. It is not specific to say by this date because they know how they operate their systems. They know that if you have a run today, next week employees will be receiving money. What we are saying collectively with other unions, this morning we had a meeting with other unions and we are issuing a statement to this effect that the department must be very clear as to when in terms of the dates. It must not just be issued that um, by the end or before the end of December they, they would have 
have paid. We want specifics because teachers want their money. They want to use this money over this, uh, these holidays. So, and it's money that they are owed by their employer, which is the Department of Education, will continue to put pressure to the department. And that is why you are issuing a statement this morning to say, department, tell us your secular, whilst it's appreciated, but it is vague. We want specifics, the time frames, when are they paid? Ms. Kaluza, what happens should the department not make those payments come the end, before the end of December? We will have because we, we continue to engage with them. Um, um, uh, collectively as unions but also as individual unions even Sato is using lawyers to, to write to, to, to them, we will have to, to see, remember Sato is not a federal organization we will always touch base with our principals, our national office to be guided properly because the unfortunate one which is why we are pushing that the department we, we must engage and circle before we close those today schools are closing Today's schools are closing and it will be very difficult to, to engage with members. The only members that we have whom we can consult with are those that are in marking centers. We think that we will rely on them to inform us as to what the way forward becomes. But going to the marking centers is not about disrupting uh, marking. You know, as teachers, we can't disrupt marking because it's the work is the conclusion. Uh, and uh, we want to see the completeness of the work that we have done uh, from the beginning of the year, teaching the learners, and we can't disrupt marking now, as we have never disrupted examinations, we'll never disrupt marking, but what we want, because we are recognized teacher unions, those teachers who are there are members of our unions, they are members of certain other unions, when we want to consult with them, because they are owed by the department, and the responses that came from the department where they were narrating their financial difficulties, you then ask a question, do they have have the money to pay for the same markers that are in the marking centers. It's a question that remains uh, hanging uh, because the department is daily telling and uh, we're saying, please, we appreciate the secular you issued yesterday, HOD. We note it, but be very specific. Tell your employees to say, when are you paying in terms of the date? Lastly, before I let you go, Ms. Kaluza, what are some of those excuses that you keep mentioning that the department is giving you regarding why they are unable to make those payments? And Satu had said that they will uh, institute some sort of court action uh, seven days ago. Uh, has that also been done? Yes, we continue uh, to engage because even uh, the fact that now they are able to they are able to say in the letter they wrote to 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 everyone yesterday the secula that uh, they've been given permission we want to put on record that that permission did not co co come like mana it is as a result not of them but of Satu writing to the director general and the director general engaging with the national treasury that is why and it's a victory to us we see now they are claiming that but it is something that was initiated by, by us as, as Satu. Some of the excuses they are raising, it's one that is known that uh, they don't keep their money. The money, they say, is kept by the provincial treasurer, and every time they have to pay for whatever, whether salaries or uh, the goods or the services they have to pay for, every month they must be given money by the provincial treasurer. We think that it is abnormal because the Department of Education has its own Budget. Why is it not allocated and given its budget to manage? But some of the things is that it, uh, they are mentioning that they have overspent in the, the previous financial year, even now, including the impact of the budget cuts that were implemented by the National Treasury uh, because last year we're told and it was announced and I think it's something that affected almost all provinces. KZN Department of Education lost about six billion to uh, or through the, the budget cuts. This year they told us that it's nine billion, it's going to be eleven billion if I'm not mistaken next year. Again, it's another question from us as a union. Isn't this government that we have determined or declared education as a priority. So, so why do you cut 
Why do you cut its budget? Because if you cut the budget, it will impact negatively on that which must be done in the classroom. And for that to be done in the classroom, you need to pay your employees. You need to ensure that you support the learners in all and everything that they need. So that's the situation that we are facing, and these are the challenges that the department is mentioning. Thank you very much. That is Nomarashi Akaluza, who is the Provincial Secretary of Satu here in the province, just taking us through the reasons why uh, they are frustrated with the Basic Education Department, specifically in the province. She mentioned there that they're saying there's issues of budget cuts, also mentioning uh, the fact that they're saying they have to go to Provincial uh, Treasury instead of their own budget within the department. So she's just highlighting what, uh, most of those issues, also saying that they have no intention for now to uh, disrupt marking centres because they do understand the importance of matriculants receiving their results. Back to you, Koli. No, Mutisa, thank you very much for that live update. It is a worrying situation indeed. All right.